Hello, my name is Christine Beard. I'll show you how I painted this picture of On the Deccan. So first of all, I got my reference photo from iStock and I cropped it and you'll see it there in the top left hand corner. First of all, I'm preparing my palette, my uh, porcelain Tom Lynch palette with uh, my three water pots, one for yellow, one for the pink colours and one for blue and I'm preparing uh, six pools of paint on the palette. Uh, I use Windsor and Newton professional paints and I only ever use the six. They are Windsor Lemon, Quinacridone Gold and um, Permanent Rose, Alizarin Crimson, which I'm about to put on the palette now. You see I'm rinsing off the paint between colours before I put it onto the palette because I'm really keen to keep my colours as clean as possible. Very important. I'm checking on the piece of paper in my hand what's on my brush to see if there's any pink left before I go on to the blue colour. So I dip into the blue water pot and now I'm putting the fifth colour which is cobalt blue. And I'm looking to get a sort of milky creamy consistency on the palette. And the last colour I'll go on to shortly is cerulean blue. I only ever use these six colours and um, I'm always amazed just how many different shades and hues I can get from the six without needing to turn to any others. The whole purpose of my painting is figures, but figures caught doing something, anything, nothing, just in a pose, ideally not a modelled pose, but a everyday ordinary pose so that I can uh, work on uh, capturing that feeling, that transient moment in time. So you'll see um, I've got a brush there and it's a uh, round silver black velvet and it's a size 20. I do the whole thing with the one brush. I have another brush there you can see in the palette that's a size 16. Uh, occasionally I'll turn to that but generally everything is done with a size 20. It's got a lovely fine point on it and you can see I'm already starting on the hair. There was an underpainting already there. I'd uh, taken my paper which by the way is Arches medium 300 GSM or 140 pounds paper. I always use Archie's blocks so that the paper is flat and you'll see I've taped a border around it so that I have a nice white border at the end when I take the mask and tape off. So I wet the paper before I started with the underpainting and um, got it thoroughly wet so that it was shining and then I put the three under painting colours on it yellow opera rose uh, permanent rose rather and um, cerulean blue they were there on the under painting before I started this but now I'm doing the main painting this is my second pass therefore with this picture and I've let it dry after the underpainting so it's now completely flat again. It will buckle a little when you put all the water on it but once I'm getting to this place it's now completely flat which is why I like using a block because the edges are all taped down and glued down. So I've started there with the hair and the face. I'm using quinacridone gold and I'm just marking out the 
hair and the glasses and the position of the shadows on the face. I'm now taking some yellow, Windsor lemon, and putting that with a little bit of the quinacridone gold still on my brush head putting the position of the shadows on the arms. That's the only skin really, the face, the neck and the two arms on this picture. And if you notice I've dipped into my water hardly at all. This size 20 round brush holds so much water and I'm able to really control the amount of water that's on the head, which is why I've got the tea towel there and the paper. You'll see I dip a lot of the time from one palette colour to another. I'm really using hardly any water at all. I'm taking a lot of it off on the paper as I go. I've realised it's controlling the water that's the important thing. More so even than the colours in many ways. Um, so I'm now putting the shadow under the chin. That's a mix of Windsor Lemon and Permanent Rose. And now moving on to the Alizarin Crimson to put a bit of definition in the shadows of the hair. I'm doing this because by now that water that I put on there has started to dry a little, so if I put a bit of the darker colour, it will move, but only a little. Putting a little bit of blue in, cobalt blue, again to start to build up the shadows. And a bit of the blue goes onto the sunglasses. There's a residual amount of gold and Blizzard and Crimson along with the blue on my brush head for the glasses and they're starting to appear now. You'll notice I haven't dipped into the water yet really at all. If I'm dipping it's like the tiniest tip of the brush and I'm actually taking up the water off there in order to uh, move a lot of the seeping blue that's gone into the forehead and onto the cheek. So I've just basically taken the brush down to as near enough dry so that I can control how much blue seeps. I don't want necessarily a hard, hard edge, but a bit of a softer edge. So I'm okay with the seepage, but by lifting it off it immediately with a near enough dry brush, I'm able to control the colour. I'm now deciding to put back a bit more of the definition of the shadows on the left side of the nose and the mouth and the chin and for that I'm using the permanent rose and the Windsor lemon and there's a bit of a shade on the right hand side of the nose which I want to capture too so I'm capturing those here still remember using size 20 round brush I can do all of this detail with the tip of this beautiful silver black velvet brush. I tried all sorts of brushes along the way but this for me is the best. Having found them I've never looked back. And of course like many I bought all the sizes but ended up with the biggest one I own which is this one, the 12, uh, sorry the 20. So the, the, the water on the hair is drying all the time. So I'm now adding a bit more blue, a bit more red, because I want to get the shadows here, but also get it so that it mixes a little into the hair and gives a sort of softer edge to the different colors I'm putting in. And now I've got red and blue on my brush, so I'm putting that onto the arms. Again, I've just dried out a little a bit ahead of the brush there dipped it very, very slightly into the blue pot of the water so that I can put a watch in into the blue.
and the hand arm on the left hand side is a little darker so I can risk a bit more red blue going on there than on the right hand side it needs to be lighter as a rule. So you can see I'm really bringing out the flesh parts of the picture here. I'm working quite slowly really, no need to rush. The whole essence of my painting is to preserve the light, preserve the whites. There's no masking, no nothing. I'm just ensuring I keep the whites where they can be kept. Come on, some more, going back to the hair, a bit more definition. The nose, left hand side of the face, and particularly that hair shadow under the ear and at the back of the neck which will re really make it three-dimensional. And the shadow under the chin I'll also be paying attention to. So I'm checking where I'm at now with my brush head. This I'm giving my brush now a really good wash because I want to get rid of the yellow. That's so much yellow and gold in the brush head. And I want to get back to clear again. So now I'm putting glutes. I mixed a bit of cobalt and a bit of the cerulean blue and I'm just going to put an underwash basically, although there is already an underwash of blue but I'm just basically doing another full covering of the blue for the shirt. Didn't dry anything, didn't wait for anything to dry, don't need to because I'm not going to touch the hair or the arms or the face, I'm just going to be sure to put the shirt in blue um, into the picture. So it's predominantly cobalt blue with some cerulean blue accents. I'm just basically painting that shirt as a, as a whole. And then you'll see I shortly come back and put some shadows and some definition onto it. The sky is already there from the under painting. I'll deal with the water and the decking and the shadows later, as you'll see. But I won't touch the sky again. That's set from the beginning when I did the wet on the wet under painting, which was cerulean blue, just on water, and I just uh, did a, a wash. So there we are, the, the, the shirt is appearing now. I'm paying attention to the shadows of the hand on the trousers, so I'm running that down. I'm also aware there's a, a, a sort of V split of the shirt to show where the shirt begins and ends with the trousers. So as I think you can see, the lady's already appearing. We need to get her into a 3D space, but and is a, as a flat image, it's starting to become visible. Again, I'm still fiddling around with that hair, putting a bit more red, a bit more blue, wanting to get the, the, the depth of the 3D shading from the dark below her ear and in her sunglasses. And as I know, I've got blue on my brush and I added a bit of red. So I'm now adding a bit of that red and blue on my brush. When I say red, I mean alizarin crimson, because I've only got the six colours, so the pink is the uh, permanent rose, I want to call it opera rose, but it's not, it's permanent rose. The red is the alizarin crimson, and then I've got the blues. So I'm now mixing up some pink with a bit of the cerulean blue and a bit of the green, uh, <laughs> a bit of the yellow. And that gives me a beautiful yellow tinged grey, yellow pink tinged grey, which gives me the ability to have a very luminescent shading for the trousers, which are essentially white. So I'm doing the shading now for the hand and into the trousers, using essentially it's a grey, but it's a pink tinge, yellow tinged grey. And hard edge now for that shadow across her upper thigh. 
so I'm making that very very hard edge it's no wet on wet here it's a straight line that I want that's clear as it clearly is in the picture it's a hard straight edge some of the other shadows are more rounded more giving the 3d effect so they'll be softer but this one I want to be hard as per the picture still using that yellow pink blue mix grey when it dries the pink and the yellow will shine beautifully through it looks quite dark now but it will uh, dry to a, a, quite a light space and down the outer leg the left leg and just picking up the, the picture it, it, there's the very thin shadowy line down the outer part of the left leg and also a line for the shadow on the leg, the back leg as she's walking again I'm using that grey, yellow, pink, blue mixed grey for the bottom part of the leg having a bit of blue now as it goes further down to the shoe which cerulean blue that was barely got any water on this brush the brush holds so much water I'm just adding a little bit of water to the very tip and there is of course water in the paint that I mixed on the palette and I'm even drying it off to take the water away so that I'm um, just got a great control over how much water that's coloured with these this beautiful grey is going into the picture. So I'm checking now how wet the uh, shirt of the lady is. So I want to go back now and put some shades. I can leave the leg because it's a discrete section that I've done. Um, it's finished. It, it, it's it's a clear delineated little set of lines so I can quite happily go back to the shirt so now I've got um, blue and red on my brush and I want some dark blue so that I've got some intense blue. so you saw there I went into the cobalt blue well to get some uh, intense blue onto the end of my brush and I dipped in also to the red on the palette this enables me to shade that right arm shade the left of the blouse and it's all about putting more paint into the water to give that darkness that you wish I was always staggered when I first uh, started painting just how deep you can actually go and it's really to do with the amount of pure paint and pigment that you have on the end of your brush along with how much water I had way too much water on the end of my brush when I first started if you notice just I want you to pay attention just how infrequently I actually dip into the water pots if I'm dipping at all it's the very very tip of the brush that's all Once again, going back to that hair, sunglasses. Don't mind now if there's uh, no bleeding, no running on. I want quite happy to have the hair having a bit of definition with this blue red pigmentation that I have on my brush. So I've got the shade on top of the shoulder on the left, the shade to delineate her bosom on the shirt and the right hand arm it's also got some shadow and now I'm delineating the shade across the other side of her shirt for her uh, figure and her arm on the left just making sure that line on the top of her thigh is clear and the bottom of the shirt is also clearly visible and the, there is a quite a dark shadow between the two legs on the uh, right hand side of that left leg as you're looking at it so i put that in at this point 
see I dipped into the water there. This time I want to just soften the edge of the grey that I put. So I'm just running my uh, brush down. So I'm mainly the, the smidgen of, there's hardly any paint at all on the end of that brush. A little bit of paint. And it's that grey again, the, the, the yellow, pink, blue, grey that I'm putting here for the other leg now. Sorting out where her knee is, where the bottom of her trousers are, and then I'll shortly go on and deal with the shoes, or the, the runners, trainers, whatever you call them. <clears throat> so the cobalt blue is being used now to delineate one shoe edge. And I'm always going to pay attention to which foot is touching the floor and which isn't. In this case, one is touching the floor much more solidly than the other, so that will get a very definite shadow and line underneath the shoe. Bit of red, bit of cobalt. I want to really show these feet on the ground, they're touching the floor. Just wanting to wash out my brush a little because I know I want to get some thick cobalt, a bit of cerulean. So I'm going to work on that shadow now. So I'm going to run that across. Shadows for me are always coloured. They're not just one colour. They're blue, they're pink, they're red, they're gold, they're yellow. And you'll see all my shadows are multicoloured. Shadows are fun in my world. They may appear just grey on the picture, but they're not really. They're multicoloured. And uh, it's a, a, a a joy to paint shadows as far as I'm concerned. If I'm picking a reference photo, I'm looking for those that have shadows. If I take photos, I'm lucky. I live in Sydney, I've got lots of sunny days, lots of time when I'm out and about, and I'm just snapping away people as they're walking about, if they're from the back. It's uh, no drama, they don't even know I'm doing it. I'm looking for the ones with shadows on the floor, because then I can have fun painting them. So I'm just seeing where we're at and um, I think I then took a bit of time just to assess where we were at. And decided to come now and do a bit of detail for the water. So I've got um, Cerulean blue mainly, and it's rather in, uh, deep. I've got pure pigment on the brush there that's um, outlined the hand, and then I'm just drawing that down with some water on my brush to show where the horizon is on the top of the deck. But I want the colour right up against the figure to be quite dark and intense. As I move away from the body, it can be less so. And another thing I try to do is paint a stroke just the once. Then I don't have any muddying. Paint it once and leave, let it dry. Rarely will I go back and go over something that I've painted. I'm letting things dry as I go. But I do break a picture down into segments, as you can see. One side of the body, now the other side of the body. Again, deep blue will be on my brush head. And I'm going around some little bits and bobs, I don't know what they are, on the decking there. And I'll also outline the body, the hand, with the deepest dark blue straight from the well. And then I'll 
more than it to the horizon and then down to the edge of the painting. All the while, the body, the shirt, the trousers, the hair, everything's drying away as I'm working in completely different sections of the painting. So now I've done the fiddly bits around the hands, the hand, and the bits and bobs and the decking there, and I'm now bringing it to the edge of the painting and to the horizon. Maybe dipped in the yellow pot by mistake. Doesn't really matter, but I like to see the blues going in the blue, the pink paint going in the pink paint, the pot, the water pot, and the yellow and the yellow. Um, whether it actually makes a difference, I don't know, but um, Graham Berry, who taught me how to do this, keeps his water pots coloured separate, so so do I. By the way, it was him that um, got me onto the six paints and the porcelain palette. Thank you very much, Graham. Graham Berry. So now I've got some uh, gold and some alizarin crimson, and I'm painting the little bits and bobs that there on the decking. Don't know what they are, doesn't matter. I'm painting the shapes. A bit of blue, a bit of gold, a bit of red. They will just pick out and suggest something or other there. That pop of gold, pop of red just lifts the painting, I think, takes it away from being just purely blue. You can see the paper is buckled a bit with the water, but I guarantee by the time it's all dried it'll have gone back to completely flat again which is why I love Archie's paper and blocks because everything is glued down it will dry flat no dramas so now I'm going back to just put a bit of more definition into the glasses and I pay attention to the fact that uh, because she's turned to the side one of the sunglasses, you can see her face shape, so not all of it is dark. Some Quinn Acrodown gold and lemon yellow is now going into the face just to pick up some of the shading there. A bit of blue, still fiddling around with that shadow at the back of her head, beneath her ear, the back of her neck. So I know that it's really rather dark. And there's some shading at the edge of the shirt under her chin that's quite dark. There's also some shading at the edge of, oops, put the mic. Some shading at the edge of her cheek. Which uh, I want to just deepen to give a 3D feel to her cheek and her edge of her nose. Bit of wash in the yellow, not much really. Got a bit too much going on, so I'm just taking it off, blotting it away as well. Really want to keep that cheek almost white, but it's yellow white, yellow pink white and lifting is easy to do, whilst it's wet. Bit of blue, just delineating the edge of her shoe. You can almost call this stage faffing, but I must say those faffing, deepening of this shadow and that shadow, this bit, that bit, makes such a difference, I think. So I'm looking at how she's standing on the ground. Is it dark enough? Is it clear that she's very firmly attached to the deck. Let's have a look at her hands. Have we got the shading right there? A 
And soon I'll be putting another coat of blue on that shirt. In fact, I'm doing it now. So let's get the shading darker and see where that takes us. I think I went outside of the top of the shoulder there, so I was just catching it before it dries. And I decided to give the Hulk shirt another wash of blue. Deepen the whole thing. But if you're deepening the whole thing, the parts that were already dark will stay visible. So I've left it and I've come back to it now and I've got just three colours on the palette. I've washed the palette out and I've decided to do the finishing touches. I leave the painting for a while and take a look at it after an hour or so because I can see so much more when I come back to it. And I decided I just needed three colours probably, but, but possibly four. So yellow, permanent rose, cerulean blue and a bit of cobalt blue. I decided I didn't need any red or quinacridone gold as I came back and did the finishing touches. So I'm deepening the shade, shadow. Liron Jankonski said something that I've never forgotten, which is amateurs never really put enough darks on their paintings. And that's something that I have taken to heart. So I darken the darks more than I think. Because as we know with watercolour, they will dry lighter. And it's the darks that cause the 3D effect. Once again, more darks into the glasses, more darks into the hairline. Back of her hair I'll also be putting some into. Into um, between her two arms, her arms where her arms join to her body, where her chin shades her shoulder. All of that will get some attention. Can you see how little I use the water pots? I'm really just using the water pots for dipping the very edge of the brush to get a little bit of water. And if I need to move from yellow to blue, I will give the brush a really good wash. But other than that, I'm keeping the, um, the colours that are on the tip of the brush head as, are, as they are really, and using them and uh, just using my piece of paper in my hand to take off the latest colour so I can pick up the next one without having to wash anything. But here I am giving a really good wash out because I know I'm going to go into the yellow and I want that to have no blue in it. So I'm putting some yellow under the chin and then it's part of the face. wasn't happy with her nose and her nostril, I think. So I decided to see if I could uh, lift that off and have another go, which again is possible with watercolour. More than I realised at the beginning, you can uh, fiddle around with faces quite a lot, actually, until you get them quite right. So I washed the brush out quite uh, well to get any blues and pinks off so that I would be able to use the yellow without getting it uh, tarnished with the blue. So I've got yellow and pink going on now, so I'm working on the face and the hands. More yellow, again I'm checking how much yellow or pink I've got on the brush by looking at what it looks like on my piece of paper before I apply it to the picture. That piece of paper in my hand is one of the most important things I have. 
um, and just got too much water on the chin there, on the neck, so I lifted it off with the brush when I leant on heavily there. I was taking more or less all of the water in the pigment away and just leaving the smallest hint of the extra layer. It's nearly finished. I'm just seeing by squinting with my eyes. Do I have enough 3D? Do I have enough definition? Can we see the shadows? Can we see the feet on the floor? Can we see the outer part of that? right hand leg as we look at it. That's the thing I'm now thinking about. Because I don't really want to put any more colour into that decking. It just was the palest, palest yellow and blue and pink when I did the underpainting. Palest, palest amount. But I decide I do want to put a bit of an outer edge. So I get some clear water it's from the yellow pot, but it's clear. And I just run my brush just with water down the edge of that leg. And I don't want it to be a hard edge, so I just blot it out, get some blue, tiniest amount on the edge of my brush. I just want to show where the edge of that leg is. But no more than a hint. It's blue, just to help the eye see it against the pale decking. But I certainly don't want to draw it in as a hard line because that would look like a cartoon character and it's not that at all. So it's the palest, palest sense of blue that I've put there at the edge of the book, at the edge of the leg. Uh, like. Decide to go back and, as I've got blue there, a bit more blue into the shirt, do it a bit more oomph, a bit more. <laughs> bit more blue. <laughs> I really am getting to the end now. Check in, check in. Is it 3D? Does it have enough shadow? Still fiddling around with that. The nose, the glasses, the back of the, the neck, you'll see. Still put some on the, the hair. But really I haven't touched the hair apart from that shadow under the ear from the beginning. Blue. Pink, shade, a bit dark cobalt into the pink. Take it off on my white bits of paper, but add a bit of definition, a bit of a line, hard line now. Hardly any water on my brush. Still using the size 20 round. It's the whole thing with that one brush. Six colours, one brush. It's so liberating not have to worry about I've got the right colour, I've got the right shade, they're close enough. It means I can concentrate on the painting, on the shades, on the amount of water I'm using. So much more fun, I think, than worrying about the paint colour. Before I got into this and the method of using the six colours, I spent more time worrying about mixing colours than I did painting, and it was very frustrating. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering, I trace the pictures always. I don't draw. I'm not a draw drawer, and that's okay. I'm here to paint, not draw. So I trace the pictures, and then I paint, and I love painting. I have about eight paintings going at any one time so that I can paint them, have a look at them, come back to them. And it's just fun. So I'm nearly there. The amount of marks I'm making on the paper has slowed down considerably. I'm just checking, does it look like a figure moving? Still on the glasses. Those darks just make all the difference. 
Leron was so right. Back of the neck once again. And let's just add a little bit to the bits and bobs on the deck end. And I think we're going to call that done. Brush down. And here is the finished painting.